Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I put out a video on perspective the other day and I used some terms like minute of angle and such in it. And there were some questions and people wanted me to explain how we to calculate minutes of angle and things like that. So I decided to go ahead and just do a real quick explanation of some of these terms and uh, maybe even talk about a couple uh, shooting terms too. So, hope you enjoy. Let's go ahead and get Okay, so one of the first terms that a lot of people are confused about is something called minute of angle. Now, if you look at a circle, that's 360 degrees. Okay? Now, each degree, one degree, equals 60 minutes. And then each minute equals 60 seconds of angle. Okay? Now, here's how you calculate that when, when you're dealing with something like, say, shooting at a target. So, we'll go ahead and do that. So, say we've got a target. We've got a rifle here. And then we've got a target. Now, if this distance is 100 yards, All right. You can imagine the shooter right here sitting in the middle of a circle and the diameter of that circle will be 200 yards. Okay? So, if you want to find the circumference of that circle, it's 200 times pi. And we can do the math on that real quick. I probably should have had that out. But let's go ahead and pull, pull math up. So, 200 yards times 3 is 600 feet times 3.14159 is pi. So that means that the circumference of this circle is 1885 feet okay so we've got 1885 feet now we divide that by 360 and that gives us 5.24 feet now that gives us the number of feet in one degree of that 360 degree circle. Now, if we divide that by 60, and then multiply the feet by inches, or 12, we find that one minute of angle is 1.04 inches. All right, so that's how we calculate what a minute of angle is. Now let's look at an example of when an arc second would be important. We've all heard, at least recently, of the Rayleigh criterion. Now the Rayleigh criterion tells you what is the minimum angle between two objects that becomes small enough that you can't distinguish them as two separate objects anymore. Now, this has been used in the Flat Earth a few times to try and explain why objects go over the horizon. It's used very incorrectly. But um, basically, the critical angle for our eye in the, the range of light that we see is about 0 0.007 degrees. Okay? Now, the formula for that is actually 1.22 times the wavelength of light divided by the diameter of the aperture. And that gives you an answer in radians. More on that later. And for, like I said, for humans, it comes out to about 0 0.007 uh, degrees of angle. Now, what does... Now let's show why arc seconds are important when we talk about the Raleigh criterion. Now, I did a calculation the other day just because I wanted to, 
and I use the full formal formula for the Rayleigh criteria, 1.22 times the wavelength of light in meters divided by the aperture size in meters. And I found that it, for a 100 meter building to become indistinguishable top to bottom due to the Rayleigh criteria, it had to be 818 kilometers away. Now, the math for the Rayleigh criteria involves expo exponential numbers and, you know, they're, they're kind of big and stuff. One of the quick and easy ways that we can do this is figure out, well, how many arc seconds does this represent? So let's figure that out real quick. So 818 kilometers times 2 is the diameter times pi will give us the circumference of a circle that big. So let's go ahead and do that math real quick. So 818 times 2 times pi gives us a circle that's roughly 5,140 kilometers around. Divide that by 360. is 14, 14.27 14 kilometers. That will give us the number of kilometers in one degree on that circle. Now, if we divide that by 60, that gives us the number of kilometers in one arc minute around that circle, and it's um, it's 237 meters, okay? That's 237 meters. We'll just go ahead and go with that. Now, if we divide that again by 60, we find that one arc second is about 0 0.4 meters. Now, if that's how far we can see a 100 meter building and each arc second is about 0.4 meters, excuse me, it's about four meters, my mistake. That means that we can see about 25 arc seconds. So, can we use this for anything else? Let's say we're looking at a building 37 miles across Lake Ontario, specifically let's look at the CN Tower. Now, we can only see that much of it from across Lake Michigan. Or excuse me, Lake Ontario. I live on Lake Michigan. Sorry about that. Or near it at least. Um, they often say that the Raleigh criteria means that you, that's why you can't see the bottom half of this building. First of all, the Raleigh criteria determines whether you can see and tell the difference between the bottom and the top. It doesn't stop somewhere along, you know, somewhere along the building. So could we see the, the difference between the bottom and the top of the CN Tower at 37 miles? Well, let's go see what 25 arc seconds of that would be. So 37 times 2 times pi equals the circumference. Divide that by 360, divide it again by 60, and then divide it by 60 to get seconds, and then multiply that by 25. Okay. So here's the math. I took 37 miles times 5,280 feet per mile was 195,360 feet. 
multiplied that by 2 and by pi and divided it by 360, that comes up to 3409.67 feet is 1 degree. You divide that by 60 to get 1 minute, and that is 56.8 degrees. Now, in order for a building to not be able to be distinguished top to bottom, according to the Raleigh criteria, it has to be about half of that. So, at 37 miles, we should see any two objects that are more than about 30 feet apart on the opposing shore. And since the CN Tower is a lot higher than 30 feet, the Raleigh criteria is not a cause for us not to see any part of that building. Okay, so let's use a real life example of where radians will come in handy. All right, let's look at a typical flat earth video on we shine a laser over a body of water and oh my God, we can see it. The earth is, you know, the earth is flat. Okay, so we've got 12 kilometers across the lake and we're going to shine a laser across that. And if we can see it, the earth's flat. If we can't see it, well, I guess we just didn't see it because the earth is still flat. So how many radians are in a circle with a radius of 12 kilometers. So, in order to find the circumference of a circle, it's 2 pi times the radius, and that will give us a circumference. Right? But how many radians are in a circle? So, we would take the circumference and divide it by what? That's right, 2 pi. So each radian would be 12 kilometers. Pretty slick, huh? So let's take our radian and divide that by 1,000. And that will give us a millirad. And that millirad will be 12 meters. Right? Everybody with me so far? Now, if the laser spreads at a rate of 0.8 millirads, that means that four-fifths of this 12 meters is the normal spread of the laser, right? So, we're looking at just over nine meters at that distance. Now, what's the earth curve calculator say we should have for a drop at that distance? So, we've got a two meter observation height, we have a 12,000 meter range. How much will be hidden? 2.7 meters. 2.7 meters. The normal spread of the laser at that distance is 9 meters. Can you see the laser? Yep. Why? because the laser was expected to spread that far in that distance. That's why it's kind of difficult to do laser observations over relatively short distances. If you want to impress me, go shore to shore on Lake Michigan, 80 miles across the lake, and show me a laser. You shine a laser on the Michigan side and, and give me a photograph of it on the Wisconsin side. That'll get my attention. If you want to do it at 12 kilometers, don't waste my time. It's just well within the normal spread of the laser. Well, guys, I think that's probably about enough for right now. I don't want to hit too much math because it makes flurfs cry. But uh, I wanted to actually give you the breakdown of what a minute of angle was, what an arc second was, what a rad or a millirad was, and how they're used and things like the Raleigh criteria. And, um, you know, hopefully you got a little better understanding of it. 
hey, take a moment and go on over here to my page and hit like and subscribe, or just do it on this video. Uh, hit that little bell, get some notifications from me. I'd really like to get a few more subscribers here, and it would really be nice if you'd just toss your name into the hat. So thank you very much. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care, guys. This rabbit hole's too deep for me.